for us uh, to do. Um, this is a 36 foot uh, motor yacht that had wooden frame windows that were causing a lot of leakage and rock damage to the boats. So here we can see that we've got the, the window removed. This is still a rough aperture here with square corners. This aperture here has been uh, prepared and as you'll see the corners have been infilled to allow us to use radius corners. The reason that we want to do that is first the aesthetics of the boat um, will suit radius corners better but more importantly a radius corner window is stronger than a mitred window and the reason for that being is that on this mitred window we have curvature going fore and aft down the side of the superstructure but we also have curvature going from top to bottom on the superstructure so the frames will try to take up the two different planes so the bottom frame will bend fore and aft and the vertical frame will bend top to bottom and that means that the pressure will, will come onto the corner here and it will try to open the joint. Um, if we have a radius corner window the joint will be halfway up the vertical side so therefore the joint is all working in one plane and will stay nice and tight and secure. Sometimes you can't get away from having a mitred corner window because of the shape and styling of the boat. If that is the case then we would weld the mitre and we, we'd move the, the joint line up here onto the vertical surface just to replicate what we do with the radius corner window. Um, as I said, this particular boat is going to have all its corners infilled um, so that we get the radius corner windows because that will suit the styling of this boat much better. We're also now going to show you how we've infilled these corners because this is uh, quite a clever little method um, that we, we've come up with. Um, so that, that uh, would work very well on any wooden or GRP boat. Okay, this is how we're going to infill the corners to make them into a radius corner as we saw fitted here. I'm just going to use um, some scrap perspex which I'm going to remove the film from so that the epoxy doesn't actually stick to this but we use it as a mould. Um, okay, so I'm just going to take this up to the corner in question and mark this as to where I want it to cover. And then back on here. So here I've got a radius disc um, cut to 100 mil. This is the radius that we're using on these clamp section windows. You can recreate this by just getting a pair of compasses and drawing them at 100 mil radius. You could draw it on cardboard, etc. But picking up my marks on my perspex, and I'm literally just going to draw a line round on the perspex. I'm now going to tape the perspex in place into the corner. Now this needs to be securely taped so that the epoxy doesn't run down the outside. Okay, I'm just going to also make a small key in the in the structure here so that the epoxy can go into the structure. I'm just going to drill a couple of small holes in here These are going to allow the epoxy sealant, uh, or filler rather, to uh, penetrate into the structure and really give it a good key. Um, this system will work very well on any wooden or fiberglass structure. So the materials we're going to be using are epoxy resin um, and a high density filler here. The epoxy resin we mix at uh, a ratio of 5 to 1 um, and we're just going to use a simple measuring spoon for that. Um, the high density filler we use at a ratio of 3 to 1 of powder like that. We're trying to achieve a thick gloopy mixture here that will stand up on its own and not sink as it sets. We're using a ceramic bowl. This is to help dissipate the heat out of the, the epoxy and it will give us a longer working time with the, the material. And we then just have a spatula to take the filler out of the bowl and, and put it into the corner. So I'm just going to put my gloves on. And here we go with the mixing. 
Good quality epoxy is the boat builder's best friend. Apart from its extraordinary adhesive qualities, it also makes a permanent structural repair. But it is imperative to mix the exact manufacturer's ratios and ensure that the working temperature of the boat is at least 10 degrees above. The reason for this is that as a two-part chemical mixture, it needs this minimum temperature to trigger the chemical reaction when you combine the hardener with the epoxy and that in turn sets off the whole curing process. If you get it right, the final mix will be stronger than the boat itself. If you don't, the mixture will not set hard and the repair will be completely ineffective, leaving you to scrape it all out and start again. Not only is the epoxy very expensive, it makes a horrible mess, so very careful measuring is critical. Once you add the hardener, the curing process starts immediately and you will have a limited working window, or pot life as it's called. Once it's set, it's set. Make sure that's all properly mixed around. We've got about a 20 minute working period, I think, with this mix. So we need to make sure it's fully mixed and now we're just going to add the powder. The ceramic bowl just seems to restrain the very quick curing reaction that comes at a rush as the chemical reaction completes its cycle. And we just mix that all in. And a little bit like Gordon Ramsay here just at the moment. Mix that all up. So as you can see, that's a nice thick, relatively stiff mixture there. So that's the consistency that we're after, so that it will stand up in the corner and won't sag down and run out of our perspex. Okay, so we've got our nice thick mix that's uh, not going to fall off the end of the spatula and I'm just going to put this into the corner now make sure I get it into those drill holes so that it's keyed into the structure as we've said before. Although you're up against the clock, be precise in your work because you do not want to get this mix on any other part of the boat as it will set hard and cause a great deal of damage when you try and remove it. If you do have a spill, remove it immediately before it sets. Acetone is the best solvent. If you do need to uh, top the uh, mixture up later, it can always be added to. But I'm going to put my perspex on here to approximately the right size and I can see that I'm going to still need to fill some more of that in a minute. But I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to tape my perspex in place. We found that high adhesive hazard tape stuck the best and allowed us a little flexibility to reposition the perspex. up a little bit more. Just check the consistency. It's still sticking to our spatula so we're happy with that. So we can see our line that we need to fill to. And there we 
have a filled in corner. Now we can grind that all up in the morning when it's all set. And, and that will, job will be a good one. Don't be afraid to work the mixture in. Do it now because this is your last opportunity. You want the mix to be thicker than the superstructure, as you can grind it flush when it's set hard. I'm going to fill past my marked line on the perspex, so that in the morning I've got material that I can grind back to on the line, so that I can get a really nice fit for the corner of the window. Just thinking exactly the same. So I'm just going to tape around here to the outside, so that that's nice and tight. Finally. Pinch the two perspex sheets together parallel with the cabin walls and tape them in position. As I say, we can grind that back tomorrow. Um, and that should, that's a quick and easy way to fill in a corner. And we have a finished job. OK. And now, walk away for a full 24 hours and allow the epoxy to work its magic. We're now going to just take um, a look at this corner that we filled in last night. Um, I'm just going to take the perspex off the, uh, from the outside, so I'm just going to take the tape off. And having done that, I'm now going to just use a chisel to help prise the perspex off the epoxy. That's why it needs to be an off cut. staying absolutely firm um, so I've got no worries about the structural integrity of that and that will be a nice corner we're going to grind it back to the line that we've left on here I'm now going to just knock the inner bit off as well this perspex off. Are getting this off, but at least it's proving how well the uh, epoxy is sticking into the boat. So there we have an epoxy filled corner. I'm going to take my uh, radius corners and I'm just going to mark now onto the epoxy the radius that we want and mark round so that I know the line that I've got to grind back to. So as you can see we've got to remove a little bit of epoxy just round there. And now we come to the worst bit of boat building which is uh, going to be grinding back this uh, filler. So I'm going to make sure I've got my appropriate safety gear on.
Take your time with the grinding. The hardened epoxy responds well to this process, but you can't force it. We are using a 2 inch cylindrical sanding head with 60 grit paper. When you've taken out the obvious excess, you can fare the epoxy to the line by wiping around it, forming a beautifully rounded radius. Please take your time, because once the epoxy has been removed, you can't go back. You'll have to rebuild the corner again. Yeah, so that's uh, relatively straightforward to do, if not a little messy, but it's a good strong structure and uh, allows us now to fit a radius corner window. Now that we've built the radiuses, we can get on and measure the window templates. This is definitely a job for two people. Right, so we've uh, put the paper in place now over the aperture and I'm now going to draw around the aperture here with a pencil um, to mark it onto the paper. So here we go. We are looking for one extremely accurate fine line which will be transferred to the computer when we get it back to the factory. Okay Sam, can you move the board along? A flat board held firmly against the aperture edge ensures that you get tight up against it. This process really does need to be 100% okay. accurate, as a loose fit will bring back the old problem of leaking windows. Okay. Okay, and then we'll go vertically now. Yep. Okay. Okay, magic. We've now drawn around the aperture. I'm going to label this pattern up um, with what the customer wants here. So it's very important we know 